Hey guys, it's Ross and in today's video, I want to talk about the best fertilizer for fig trees. Um, well, actually it's not really a fertilizer, but if we think about what plants need, right? The main things that plants need are sunlight, uh, water, food, right? That's the fertilizer. Uh, but what's often overlooked is actually the temperature because plants are kind of like, I don't know what the word is for it, but plants are like cold-blooded animals. They're not animals, but they, they act in the same way, right? Similar to like insects or dinosaurs, if you're a fan of Jurassic Park. Um, what I mean is that when it's cold outside, plants don't really perform very well. I mean, it depends on the species, right? It depends on where the plant is adapted, where it originated from, right? Certain things like my alliums, they grow for even parts of the wintertime. But a fig tree really needs temperatures somewhere over 60 degrees to really do much of anything. I know if you look at scientific literature, it'll, it'll show you that fig trees are actually growing even at lower temperatures than that, probably somewhere around 50 degrees. And we're talking about the, the soil temperature, that is. So you'll actually have some root growth at lower temperatures, but I know for a fact through my own experience of having many potted trees that really a, a potted tree, a potted fig, or really any fig at all is not really going to grow much until temperatures at the soil level hit about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really important to do, you know have that distinction. We're not talking about the air temperature, we're talking about the soil temperature. It's the same thing when I'm rooting my fig cuttings. When we talked all winter time about how to root fig cuttings from really step one all the way to, to where we are today, uh, the temperature made the biggest difference. It's such a huge difference between, let's say 60 degrees and 65 degrees, or even 60 and 70 degrees. I would say the, the jump from 60 to 70 is pretty big. And even bigger when the trees just go absolutely berserk is from 70 to 80 degrees. I would say the optimal temperature for growth, I know the optimal temperature for when you graft figs um, to get that appropriate callus to form, probably the, the best temperature somewhere in the high 70s, somewhere like 78 degrees. I would say optimal growth here in my location is probably when the root zones of these plants are somewhere around 80, maybe even 85. They really just go nuts. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this, and this may seem a bit obvious, is that this is what we should be focusing on now in the beginning of the season. Um, instead of really just feeding them, giving them so much water, those are kind of secondary because it doesn't matter how much we feed them, or how much we water them, how much sun we give them. Without the right temperature, none of that really matters. So you can see here, I live in a pretty cold place, right? I live in zone 7A, right outside of Philadelphia. In order to have these fig trees fruit for me in a season, because we only have 180 days of growing, six months of growing days that are frost free. In order to get this to work, I need to really increase the heat that are given to these plants. Some things that are very obvious. We have them on the patio, right? We have them in containers, right? They're uh, above ground. Because they're above ground, the heat and the sun really warms these things up much quicker. That air temperature really warms them up. We're getting lots of heat from the patio that's reflecting. We can have them against the house that's a bit of a thermal mass. All that heat is being absorbed during the day, released at night, keeping things a bit more uh, warm at nighttime. But what I really wanna show you, which I think is really important, is I wanna talk about mulch. And you can see down in here, we have a, a potted fig. The temperature right now, if I can show you guys this, is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, particular potted tree here has almost no mulch on the top but if I were to put this thermometer now on a tree that has plenty of mulch like an inch or two of mulch on top of the soil take the temperature of that it's already dropping quite drastically right right now we're at about 62 61 somewhere in there so that's a huge difference like we mentioned is that we're going from instead 
62 all the way to 68. And I'm telling you, the growth of these things is just astronomically different. What I've learned, and I did this in a little fig rambling video that we did, is that I took the soil temperature of various different locations of my yard. If there's heavy mulch, like there is here with this straw, the soil temperatures are significantly, almost 15 to 20 degrees cooler than it could be, potentially. Um, if we have things like rocks, I want to show you guys these rocks, and obviously it depends on, you know, where the sun is hitting, right? So you have to compare, obviously the sun's hitting here right now, so you'd have to compare another area where the sun is also hitting for an adequate amount of time, right? So that's obviously important, but if I compare the soil temperature here versus, let's say, over there where it's heavily mulched, you're looking at a 15 to 20 degree difference. The soil temperatures here that I've measured a couple days ago, it's a similar day out than it was. This is somewhere around actually 70 to 75. And this is on the west side of the house. On the south side here, which is getting more sun during the day, it's getting sun all day. That was in like the high 70s, almost 80 degrees against the house here. That's the perfect microclimate I have on the property. Um, and then if you compare bare ground, let's say the ground right here as it is pretty bare, this is about five-ish degrees cooler than an area with rocks. So if we have rocks on the soil surface, we have uh, maybe large boulders. If we also have maybe some black greenhouse or nursery style plastic, you know, that plastic you put on the ground, I'm sure that's going to be much warmer than bare ground. But the bare ground is also much warmer than something that's heavily mulched. And that's exactly why we have these, these trees in particular here mulched because we want to cool this down. These are where my plums are, my apricots. You can see they're already in bloom. There's nothing I can do about it. But keeping the soil cooler is really going to help these trees bloom at a later point. Um, and the opposite is going to happen with the figs. The figs wake up very late. They take a long time to get going in the spring. So what we want to do is put them in an area that's obviously getting a lot of heat during the day. But we have something on the ground that's helping it warm the ground up. So we have stones, rocks, boulders, black plastic. If we do have mulch, let's say this whole bed here was mulch, we want to move all that mulch away. And then we can bring it back in sometime around July, late June, when things get really, really warm and we wanna actually cool things down a bit and conserve that moisture, also regulate the moisture. So we're gonna be doing that and I'll talk about that later in the season, but that's really the most important thing, I think, when it comes to figs this time of the year in terms of what you can do for them. You know, this isn't really a technique like thinning. We talked about thinning. This isn't a technique like pinching. This is the number one important thing, heat, all right? So take care, guys, and uh, I wanna thank you all for watching this one. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We have all kinds of different stuff like this that's a bit different than the videos. Also on the website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. Also, if you wanna support the channel, check out our Patreon page. All that's in the description, and uh, I'll catch you later, all right? Take care, guys.